Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series Wave 2 review. Today we take a look at probably one of my more anticipated figures from this wave, Teratophonus. The reason I am excited for this figure is Teratophonus actually pairs well with three of the existing Ceratopsian figures in Beast of the Mesozoic. I just love how we get a lot of Tyrannosaurs that actually pair uh, with the previously available Ceratopsian figures. So this figure is available on Creative Beast Studios website, retails for $59.99, and the link to their website is down below in the description. So let's go over the package really quick before we crack open Mr. Teratophonus. We got this beautiful, beautiful artwork of Teratophonus on the front right here. It just, you know, looks so gentle. You just want to just pet it as it just rips your hands off. Uh, got this nice window display with the figure. Piece of Mesozoic logo front and center. Teratophonus Tyrannosaurus series on the bottom, spinning it around. Nice product shot of Teratophonus with some information about it, along with the other figures available in Wave 2. So that will do it for the packaging. Let's crack this figure open and take a closer look. And here is Teratophonius. Ah, the packaging. I have to say, I absolutely love this body mold. Uh, it's the same body type as this wave's Chinsusaurus. I think of all the different body types that we've gotten so far in the Tyrannosaurus series, this one is the most fun to play around with. Uh, you can see you get some good balance with that. There's no uh, support rod for this one-legged pose. It's being supported by that little peg uh, on the bottom of the base. Uh, just like most figures, in the Tyrannosaur series, the color scheme is based off real life animals. This one is based off the uh, Malaysian painted Terrapin. Uh, the paint scheme on this figure is pretty much the only issue I have with it. Um, you know, when we look at the artwork, you can see it's a little bit more gray and you have the, you know, that splash of red from the painted Terrapin and it's nowhere to be seen on the paint scheme of this figure. And just the paint apps, uh, especially that, that cream color along the side it's just very flat and matte i wish there was a wash over there to bring out some of the scale details and it just looks you know i i don't want to say it, just the, the paint apps just look a little less quality than some of the other figures uh in this wave just really wish it was a little bit more gray with that splash of red i think it would make it look really really unique other than that i love playing with this thing um like i said this body mold is just really great to mess around with and you know it's just cool that we have a teratophonus figure you know it's from the kaparowitz formation we got a bunch of ceratopsians uh already in beast of mesozoic that are from that formation so this figure is going to pair up uh really well with a bunch of them and now time for some measurements. This figure is 12 inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail, or 30 and a half centimeters, about four and a half inches tall to the top of the head. Obviously, that will change depending on how you have the figure position, or 11.6 centimeters. So we have a couple of measurements for Teratophonus. This particular figure right here is based off the juvenile specimen, which is around 20 feet long, or six meters. So that will put this figure in the 120 scale range. Uh, the adult specimen, is around 25 to 29 feet long or 7.6 to 8.7 meters i'll put that around 125 to the 129 scale now the reason for this is if we had you know a lot of the parts with these figures are shared uh with other species in line to keep the cost down uh, an adult teratophonus uh, figure probably would require a completely new body somewhere in between this body type and you know the Lithonax and Bista Herversa. You know the same thing is happening to the Tarbosaurus that's coming out in wave three. You know and sharing a body type you know with Despletosaurus, Albertosaurus and they kind of need a different body in between that and the T-Rex and you know it's just you know a lot of money goes into tooling these figures, so some compromises have to be made. So, you know, I would have loved an adult size Teratophonus, but, you know, this is fine for now. And just like most fig all figures in this wave, you do get a nice collector card. Now, see what I'm talking about with the artwork? See how it has that nice gray coloration with those splashes of red? Like, the figure does not match the card art at all. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by that. I just really like this color scheme on the card much much better than what we have in hand on the back of the card you get a picture of the actual product and some facts about teratophonus you can see right here it is listed at the juvenile length so let's go take a look at the accessories before we move on looking closer at the figure itself and here are all the accessories that come with the teratophonus as i just knock everything all over the table first up is the display base it's the same base that came with the chinsosaurus and the juvenile t-rex you can see two peg holes for the feet right here it has a nice rocky finish with a lot of grasses and mosses painted on it bottom of the base is hollow really missed the uh, storage for the extra feet like on the uh, raptor series really wish i was incorporated in here I have all these accessories in all separate little bags with their cards in them so i know what belongs to what and then over here you do get these clear support rods this one right here 
is my favorite one to use. It's high enough to get, you know, to about the belly of the figure. You know, just use it for a little bit extra support. Just pegs right into the hole on the base right here to give it a little bit of a forceful push here click in. Definitely push it in from the base. These rods are very easily prone to snapping. And then you get this other rod right here. And this one, uh, I can't stand. I don't like this one. It's supposed to clip around the leg of the figure. And where do I put the figure? Oh, it's right here on the side. And the problem with that is it's, it's not, it, it just doesn't fit. You really have to finagle with the figure to get around it. It's like a very specific position. And I've cracked a couple of these on my other figures just trying to get them around there. And I just don't use it anymore. It's very limited. You know, you can put it here and you know, you don't get a lot of poses of this leg support. I wish it was a little bit wider or maybe made out of like a flexible material so it wouldn't be so prone to breaking. So this rod is basically uh, useless to me. And then down here, we do get a couple pairs of feet. We do get a pair of closed toed feet. They all peg in on the bottom uh, on that ball joint. And then we have a pair of walking toes. And obviously you get the splay toed feet that already come installed on the figure itself. And now let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on the figure. Starting with this wonderful head sculpt. All the head sculpts in the transfer series are very highly scientifically accurate. And they all look great. You can see the eye is painted orange with a black pupil. You have all a little bit of gray and brown black and uh, burgundy colors on the snout and then transitions into this nice cream color. The ornamentation on the head is done in a brownish color. They have a little bit of a wash on there to bring out all the details. They have all this fine sculpted uh, scale detail all over the figure. Open the mouth up, you can see the gums are painted. A deep pink color with that glossy finish. The teeth are all nicely painted and you can open up the mouth a little bit wider on this figure than some of the other ones. You can see all that nice mouth detail, you have a, a throat canal in there, it looks like it goes on forever. And let's take a view of the head from the front, you get that nice binocular vision. Not as goofy looking as some of the other Tyrannosaur figures when you view them from the front. And then going down to the neck, you have some of that black, uh, brown, and a little bit like a peach color for the side of the neck. Going down to the arms, the hands are painted pretty much black with black claws, nice glossy black paint. On the hand claws going down to the body, you have this, uh, you know, cream color that I really just don't like it. Like I said, it looks very, very flat on the figure. I just wish it was like a wash over there to kind of bring out the scale details, make it a little bit more defined. Really, really wish that this figure looked like the artwork. Like that's my biggest complaint uh, about this figure. It's probably bothering me more than it should, but you know, it's just bugging me a little bit. Here's a view of the figure from the top. You can see all that nice black paint. Uh, you know, there's a nice little transition on some of the paint with the, the browns uh, on it. You can, that pop makes that scale detail pop just a little bit. And then going down to the hind legs, you have very, very long hind legs. Like these are the same legs on the Juvenile Rex and Chinsu So it gives the figure a very juvenile look as it should because it is based off the juvenile specimen. And then going down to the tail, you have that nice brown stripe going down with all those black markings and cream coloration all mixing in. Taking a look at the feet, we got some nice, uh, real nice painting on the feet to bring out all the large scales on the feet and on the top of the toes, toe claws are decked out in glossy black paint. Now for articulation, articulation on this figure is really good. Mouth can close completely flush. It can open up that far head can move up just a little bit on the Chinsu Saurus, which I'll take out later. You know, like I said, it shares the same body type. Just the way the head sculpt on the Chinsu, you get much more range of movement on that head. You get a little bit of downward movement and side to side using the neck joint and the head joint. You get some nice side to side movement with those joints going down to the forearm. Forearms can move forwards, backwards. They can swing out a little bit. You get about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow joint. Wrists can swing inwards and outwards and rotate going down to the body. You get this torso cut. You can get some nice side to side movement out of that joint. Some upwards and downwards movement. High legs can move backwards. They can move forwards. You get a nice bend at the knee. Let's get my camera to focus in on that. And you get a bend at the ankles rotation and rotation at the feet and upwards and downwards movement on that ball joint for the feet. Going down to the tail, the whole tail is made out of soft rubber material with a bendy wire in there and you can get some nice movement using that wire and some up and down and side to side movement on that tail joint. So the articulation on that figure is pretty good. That's why it remains one of my favorite body types in the Tyrannosaurus series.
Moving on with comparisons, here it is with the Hammond Collection Robert Muldoon. Three and three quarter inch figures are 118 scale, so they scale really well with the Tyrannosaurus series. And next up, let's bring out the Chinsusaurus. Like I said, both these figures share pretty much the same body mold. And I just want to show you the difference on the Chinsusaurus. You can get some really, really nice head movement on that. It just, you know, has to do with the way uh, the, you know, the neck on this figure is sculpted. You know, same thing with the Ceratops in the series. You know, a lot of the figures, she had the same body mold, but just depending on how the head and neck was sculpted, you know, the, the articulation was like night and day between uh, some of the figures. But yeah, you can get much, much better range of movement on the Chinsu Source. Just something I wanted to point out. And next up here it is with its wave mate, the Bista Aversa, which, you know, after, you know, handling and reviewing these figures, the Bista is my absolute favorite out of wave two just absolutely love that color scheme and here it is with the pro ceratosaurus uh, the last figure i need to review for this set and why not here it is with the 118 scale dromaeosaurus and next up here are some fellow caparwitz formation ceratopsians we have the massive utah ceratops the pseudoceratops and cosmo ceratops so little Teratophonus here has a few Ceratopsians uh, it can square off against, even though that Utah Ceratops will probably absolutely muckle uh, this Teratophonus. And we, here we have the Safari Limited Gripposaurus, another species from that formation. Obviously, it's not to scale to these figures, but it works as a good juvenile if you want to display it with your Teratophonus. And lastly, we can't end these uh, comparisons without comparing it to the massive 118 scale Tyrannosaurus Rex. So final thoughts on Teratophonus here. I really like this figure, love the body type. I think it's the best body type in the transfer series so far. You know, it's a good size figure, has a lot of, uh, you know, flexibility and playability. It's just an absolute blast uh, to mess around with this uh, body size. Uh, my biggest critique is, uh, you know, just the paint uh, apps on here. I just don't like how that cream coat looks so flat on there. You know, it just makes the scales. Uh, lose a lot of their detail and I really wish uh, the color scheme more closely matched the artwork with the, those grays and reds uh, maybe maybe I might pick up a second one one day and just repaint it to look like that artwork uh, who knows you know I like throwing you know 60 bucks here and there just you know throw paint on a figure uh, but yeah you know you got three ceratopsians that it can pair up against and they look uh, all great together so all around you know it's a must add figure to the collection it's the only teratophonius figure out there right now and you know there's no bad figures in uh, the BOTM line uh, you know just you know some critiquing about the paint apps on that it's a great figure and I do highly recommend it so like i said at the beginning of the review you can pick this figure up from creative b studios they're now in stock i'll link is down below in the description so that will do it for the review i'm just gonna you know do the pro ceratosaurus and i'm all caught up on these wave two figures got some pnso stuff coming in uh my alberta source is still mia i have no idea uh where that figure uh ended up so when that comes out eventually be reviewing that megalosaurus should be here in a couple days and uh as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.